Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Scotty and today we are going to create a clock showing you the real local time you have set on your computer. Now this clock can actually be used in games. You can use you can instance this class cl you can instance this clock in pretty much any game you have. Let's start our project and let's start by creating our main scene. Now I'm going to go through each and every step in order to create a clock. So let's call our control for main, because this will be our main node. Now, I don't really have to do anything, I would usually change the anchor points, which I actually, you know, instead of talking about, let's just do it. Let's just hit margin to zero and bottom margin to zero, so it fills the entire screen. Control S to save, and let's save it as main TSCN. Now, I've read a clock folder ahead of time that contains images of the clock we're going to be using. Let's start with creating our clock. I want to create a node 2D. This will be our clock now our clock needs a body a physical body or hmm, a sprite rather so let's create a sprite and this sprite is gonna go name body let's load a texture here from our clock folder in the resources and use the little clock i made now this clock is kind of big because i made it a thousand by a thousand i do regret doing that so let me just change the display size now set width to eight thousand and height to a thousand. Now you can use any sized sprite as long as you follow the core principle behind it, how you do how you make it. And it's there's really no difference except where you're positioning it in terms of position. So we now we now know that the body is centered on the clock. So the body positioning is zero zero right there. On the right, right there. But the clock, however, we are going to move to the center of the screen. Now we know the screen size is a thousand, so center will be five hundred on both X and Y. Which means any new shell we add here will be positioned directly in center here. <laughs> Let's start by getting our arms. I'm gonna use a position 2D for our pivot points. So pivot for our hours. Control V to copy it two times more. And let's name them minutes. And lastly seconds now each pivot hours minutes and seconds will have a pointer and that will be a sprite so i'm gonna get a sprite here this will be the arm for hours let's load a texture from the same folder i'm going to use power pointer hour there we go now here's the trick here to do to getting this right if we were to rotate our pivot here and and a pivot by the way is our center for rotation in our current project here if i now press e to change to this, to rotate mode rather, and rotate, you will see this is wrong, it, it's not right, we need to move the pointer away from the center. Control C, Control Z to undo that, and let's move our sprite a bit, because the sprite, let me, <laughs> Control C again, let me press Q to change back to normal selection mode, which is that one, that's default mode, let's move it up here a bit, let's take a look, if I were to rotate this again, pressing E, holding down and rotating, you can see it's, it's more right. We want to position it directly into center here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the texture here. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to select the Y size here. Control C to copy. Now I'm going to go down to positioning and node, under node 2 here. I'm going to go to Y and write negative 180, which is what we copied here, divided by 2. Because you can actually enter math inside here and press enter and it will just calculate it for you. Wonderful. <laughs> and now you can see it's perfectly centered here. The bottom of our arm is in our center here. Let's do the same for the other arms. We now have our minutes, hours, and seconds pointer here. Let's just start by creating our script here. And this script is actually quite easy. The most difficult part about our script is actually the math behind it. There is some math in here. Okay, so what do you want to do? This is the start. I want to get the references for pivot hours, minutes, and seconds. I want to show you how to do one of them, and I'm just going to skip ahead until I've done all of them. Let's start by getting the, the hours pointer here. We're going to use the export node path var pivot hours path, because that's what we're getting. We're getting a node path. This returns a path to the node we're going to use when we use on ready var pivot hours equals to get node. And inside get node, you put the path inside which is with this one. Now the reason I'm using export is because it's so much faster and so much easier to just click the clock here, clock node, and directly... What? Oh, sorry, there's an error here. Let me write pass here so it doesn't just 
go into the void down there. Let's click on the clock and let's just select a pivot hours path. And the script variables. These are custom variables you can easily make. There are a lot of more information on Godot's documentation pages regarding export properties. I do recommend checking it out because it makes life easier and better. So I just literally just pick the node I want to set the path to. Anyway, it's just so much easier and cleaner. There's no text there. It seems more, you know, clean. clean. So let's assign it. Double click. And done. Let's do the same for all the other nodes. Okay, we have our pointers now. All we have to do left is to assign them using our super easy system. Okay, so we want to get our current real life time according to our clock system clock. Whether or not you can use the same method for Android, I'm not sure because I have not exported to Android. However, I know it works for pretty much any computer. So let's set the process to true. And in our func process delta here, we don't actually need delta this time. That's just 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 you know, something came in mind. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need to know the time between each time of this run. What we do need, however, is to get several radians. We need to get radian for seconds, which would be equal to OS point get underscore time. And this returns a dictionary. So that, from that dictionary, I'm going to get second. But this alone would not be right, because it wouldn't be a radian. We would literally get second, like one, two, three. It's whole integers here. We want to get the radian value of this seconds second we know that there are 60 seconds to fill a full circle which is 2 pi 2 times pi which means we would have to multiply one second by pi divided by 30 which is half a circle this may not make any sense to you but but trust me this uh, this, this works this works i recommend you play around with it now let's get our minutes radian minutes equal os get time underscore minutes times pi divided by 30 because it's also 60 ticks around it and lastly let's go radian for hours equals always get time hour and times pi divided by 6 because there are 12 the 12 the 12 the 12 hours in each circle but this will not be the way we don't want it to be like this because if now we are to do ticks I'm actually, instead of talking, I'm going to show you what will happen. I'm first going to set them. But I will need to assign these from the outside. So I'm just going to set var radian. Seconds equal to null, var radian. Okay, let's go down here. We are, we are now radian for seconds, minutes, and hours. Now these are valid radians. So if it were to be 30 minutes now, this would point all the way down. Now, if this were to be, for example, 3, we would get a 45 no, sorry, 90 degree angle. However, we want a negative value of this. I'm just gonna write negative, negative, and negative. Because otherwise, if the clock would be head, it would be counterclockwise. Okay, we have a pivot seconds dot set underscore rot, which is rotation. We just insert it right there. And do the same for the other two. There we go. Let's take a look here. Let's first select our main scene here. That will be this one. And try again. Now you can see the second tick is pointing, but this won't move until this second tick is all the way to 12. Take a look at the long minute point here. But we don't we don't want it to move only after one minute. Or one second. Yeah, one minute. <laughs> Which means the hour pointer will not move until the minute pointer is all the way to 12. So when the minute pointer hits 12, this will just suddenly jump all the way to 1. We don't want that. We want to add... We want it to update with the seconds, like a real clock would. So what we're going to do is we're going to plus the radi radian seconds and divided by 60. Because it's 1 16th? 16th? <laughs> it's 1 16th of a second. We're going to increment 1 16th of a second. Or the number of seconds divided by 16th. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So lastly, we need to get a minutes radian. And this won't be divided by 60. It will be divided by 12. Because there is 12 steps around a full 2 pi circle. So let's take a look here. If everything's correct, the minute pointer should move slightly along with the second pointer here. And that's exactly what's going on here. To make things interesting, let me change my system clock here. Now because this gets our system clock in real time, if I change this, this clock should theoretically change with it. So let's try to change it from 12 hours to 13 hour, which will be one of, um, 
1 o'clock and 48 minutes. And as you can see, it's working perfectly here. Okay, let's go back. What if I were to change the minute pointer? Can we actually see the hour pointer move? Yes, we can. Wonderful. And there you have it. We now have a fully functional clock. Now, this can be turned into an instance by simply right-clicking and select Save Branch as Scene. I'm going to save this scene inside the clock folder and save it as a TSCN file and hit Save. Now, because whenever I convert something to a instance, it doesn't actually do anything in your local scene here, which kind of sucks. Let's just delete it, Control S, and just add it again here. And here we go, a scene of a clock. I can make multiple clocks. Let me scale it down and add multiple clocks. Just... No, I didn't want to, I didn't want to rotate it, there we go. Pressing W to move it, I use Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Okay, that should be enough clock, and one more, there we go. Let's see. Perfect! And you can use this in really any game you want to display time. You can even create your own time. Just make sure to change the values on the radians. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have learned something new and gained new insight in how you can use Godot. If you have any questions or perhaps even suggestions for topics you would like for me to make a video about, feel free to post them. If I am able to do so, I will probably do so. Yeah, bye-bye.